to the U of A. How students feel about people expressing their religious views on the mall. And how to prevent getting the flu. All this and more tonight. This, this is Wildcast. Is Wildcast. Welcome to the late edition of Wildcast. I'm Carol Ann Scott. And I'm Janice Yu. Thanks for joining us tonight. President Obama just delivered a speech at a Las Vegas school to build support for immigration reform. And although Arizona is a state long at the forefront of immigration enforcement, Arizona lawmakers are torn on Obama's immigration reform proposal. Wildcast reporter Sammy Joe Roth brings us this report straight from Capitol Hill. <laughs> The first trip of Obama's second term, resembling the energy of a campaign event. I'm here today because the time has come for common sense, comprehensive immigration reform. The president visiting this predominantly Hispanic Las Vegas high school to build support for immigration reform. How's the time? The central message in his speech, a call for a pathway to citizenship for more than 11 million undocumented immigrants. Monday, a bipartisan group of senators laid out plans to push specific immigration reform legislation, including Arizona's Senator John McCain. There will still be fights. There will still be battles. But I am more confident now than I have ever been that we can reach uh, an agreement and have a bill signed by the president. We can't forever have 11 million people live in the shadows. It could be a big step after years of deep divisions between Democrats and Republicans. There are some mixed reactions from Arizona lawmakers, a state long at the forefront of immigration enforcement. We're doing a great job. Maybe that's why uh, the Justice Department is taking me to court and Obama's going after me. That's sad. Here we have uh, a recent election year. Now all at once everybody's talking about uh, enforcing these laws. They should have been doing it uh, years ago. If lawmakers fail to advance their proposal, the president threatened to send his own legislation to Congress. Republicans in Congress responded to the president's speech today with caution. A spokesperson for House Speaker John Boehner warned the president not to interfere in bipartisan negotiations. Reporting on Capitol Hill, I'm Sammy Joe Roth for Wildcast. It's been a long flu season and those who have been hit with the bug are struggling to get better. Allie Lee joins the flu's us come and with gone, but nerve Allie? Virus is the new illness sweeping campus. Symptoms include, but are not limited, to stomach cramping, nausea, and throwing up, which can ultimately lead to dehydration. The way you get infected is, it can be on any surface. It's a fecal-oral contaminant, which is as gross as it sounds. Somebody that goes to the bathroom, doesn't wash their hands well, touches something else, you touch that, touch your face, touch your mouth, easy to get infected. Neurovirus, also known as the stomach flu, is most common during the winter and affects about 21 million Americans annually. Neurovirus is highly contagious and spreads quickly. It's commonly found in schools, hotels, and healthcare facilities. I'm going to prevent getting neurovirus by washing my hands all the time, working out, and eating healthy. Unfortunately, there's no drug or vaccine to treat it, but the good news is recovery is only about one to two days. Hand sanitizer reduces the number of germs, but it's no substitute for soap and water. To stay healthy, make sure you thoroughly wash your hands before eating, after going to the bathroom, and as soon as you get home. If you have the virus, it's important to stay hydrated and drink plenty of fluids. Reporting from Campus Health, I'm Allie Lee with Wildcast. But we do have good news for your health. Pharmacists say that although this season's flu is widespread across the U.S., it is not considered an epidemic here in Tucson. If you do catch it, it's no secret that cough remedies and over-the-counter drugs are not always enough. NextCare received their vaccine supply back in August, but didn't see a big turnout until three weeks ago, and only gave one dose in December. This is peak flu season right now, and it's really important to protect yourself against it. Um, you know, airplanes are really good at transporting passengers, but they're also really good at transporting germs. So if you're going to be flying for, the, for this season, traveling season, you should bring um, your own pillow and blanket. 
um, just be really careful. If you yourself are experiencing flu-like symptoms, perhaps it's best for you not to travel so you don't endanger anyone else. Messi says they give an average of three flu shots every day. It's not too late to get yours. This Walgreens has about a dozen to 20 doses remaining. This pharmacist says the, flu's de the flu debilitates your immune system, so you are more susceptible to harsher illnesses like pneumonia, for which a vaccine is also available. Pneumonia shots are recommended for kids and older adults. Brother Jed may ring a bell as last year's on-campus preacher who would challenge students about their religion and controversial topics. But this year, there's someone taking his place and raising more eyebrows. Wildcast reporter Caitlin Galante got a closer look. Hi, Wildcats. When walking around the University of Arizona campus, you might get distracted by people trying to communicate to large crowds on the mall. These people are generally known as the preachers on campus. These individuals usually stand at the grass patch located in between the Modern Languages Building and the Student Union. I've seen a lot of preachers on campus before and they always say really negative things such as like homosexuality is not accepted and how they will go to hell and I don't believe that those things should be said on campus. Those guys are kind of annoying. You know you're trying to go to class, they're always asking you to stop and talk about do you believe in God, where, where are you at in your faith. I just don't really find it necessary. These people go out of their way every day to make a statement. Expressing individuality and freedom of speech are not taken lightly here at the U of A. So on our campus, um, we have several different types of forum that fall within um, the guidelines of how we help to make sure that we're upholding the First Amendment. And most of our outdoor space on campus is what is called a designated public forum, which means that we can restrict things like time, place, and manner of speech and activities, but it also means that we cannot put any restrictions upon content of the speech. It may be difficult for some students to have to face these issues, but the university is coming up with ways to help the individuals express their minds while remaining respectful to the other students. So the Dean of Students Office is working on a series of workshops to help spread information about the different things that we do on campus. And one of those workshops will be on the First Amendment and, you know, how do we work with freedom of speech on our campus. The preachers may be a distraction to students trying to get from class to class, but they are preaching what they believe. I'm Caitlin Galante, reporting on the Mall for Wildcast. After the break, highlights of U of A students' experiences from the Waste Management Phoenix Open. Hi, right. right, David Hassel off the hop. Get hop with UA TV. Stay tuned. Don't change the dial. People may tune out someone they see on a median trying to sell newspapers. Those extra few hours of having to swipe your cat card to get in at night might be keeping non-U of A students out of the library. And while some are traveling to Mexico for cheaper gas, others are forced to pay those high prices at the pump. Students and parents are always invited to come cheer on the Wildcats. We'll see you back here next week for another edition of Wildcats. Welcome back. The Waste Management Open is a PGA Tour event near Phoenix. Located at the TPC Scottsdale Golf Course, this event has more spectators than any other event on the tour. Approximately 500,000 people attended the tournament this year, which is spread across four days. Unlike most golf events, there are huge galleries set up to not only watch the golfers, but also to enjoy cold drinks. The course is also home to the Stadium Hall at the 16th, known to many as the greatest hole in golf. It is completely enclosed by stands. Here you can see things like caddies racing to the green, scorekeepers jumping into the water, and people kicking autographed footballs into the stands, as golfer Pedreg Harrington did this past Saturday. Phil Mickelson won this year's tournament and is a course favorite as he is a graduate of Arizona State University 
and spends his off-seasons in Scottsdale. The U of A is serving up a new sport. Natasha Malenko has the latest information on how women's sand volleyball will be the newest addition to Wildcat Athletics in the spring of 2014. As the University of Arizona already offers 11 women's sports and 8 men's, they are looking forward to the addition of one more sport in spring 2014, women's sand volleyball. When we were determining which sport to add, we narrowed it down to sand volleyball, women's water polo, and women's triathlon. Um, partly because of the popularity of the sports in the region, the weather, um, what other Pac-12 schools were adding sports. Um, and really all, everything led to sand volleyball being the number one sport to add. As an emerging sport, we can officially go out and have five uh, female student athletes on scholarship this academic year. So the 13 and 14 academic year, we will compete in the spring of 14. So we've hired uh, Steve Walker, our head coach, and he is tasked with kind of uh, reviewing and analyzing those recruits this spring and having five uh, roster spots with full scholarships for student athletes. The supplemental nature of the sports, you've got five teams competing in pairs, so you have 10 uh, student athletes actively competing um, every week. We have to have at least six competitions in year one. So we have an opportunity there to supplement with walk-on staff, uh, tryouts, uh, student athletes from um, other sports, student athletes as they compete their el eligibility other sports. Um, but we will probably have about a roster size of about 15 and be able to add up to six um, full-time scholarships, which is capped. In order to be an officially sponsored NCAA team, 40 teams must compete in two consecutive seasons. In the Pac-12, four schools have already established sand volleyball as a sport. As for the Wildcats, they are still looking for their home venue. But one thing is for sure, the students and local community will be cheering this team on. We're really happy to hear that the Wildcats will be taking part in women's sand volleyball. I think it's an up-and-coming sport you've seen in the Olympics that it's really taken off. It has a pretty big following. And I think that the same can be said on a college level. And I know we're still a team short from getting involved in NCAA play at a Pac-12 level. But I think that once that happens and we get a facility on campus, you're going to see that students are really going to get behind it. We already have a pretty good following for our indoor team. And I think that once we're able to get that facility on campus, it's going to be really easy to get students there once they see the product. It's as fun as I think it will be. Reporting for Wildcast, I'm Natasha Malenko. A new semester means new changes, unless we're talking about construction on our campus. Roads continue to be closed to prepare for the arrival of the streetcar. Our reporter, Danielle Carpenter, has the details on this project. Danielle? Some students may not be aware of why there are so many construction areas around campus. Many of those areas are for installing the new Tucson Modern Streetcar, which is estimated to be completed by late 2013. The project was approved by voters in 2006 as an alternate transportation method, not just for UA students, but all of the city. Well, for the city, I think it's going to revitalize downtown. I think it gives uh, businesses downtown the opportunity for uh, more people to come to their businesses, certainly more students to come to their businesses. You know, the two major population centers or the two work centers of the whole region are the university and downtown. So to connect those two, it just makes sense if you're trying to start a business, if you're just looking for a more vibrant downtown, more stuff going on. So far, this project has generated more than 500 jobs, $800 million in public and private investments, $19 million to improve water and sewer infrastructure, and 1,500 new homes. This 3.9 mile streetcar track is expected to benefit the 100,000 people that live and work within half a mile of the route. Um, we're seeing a lot of new student housing going up downtown. Um, often right, right on the streetcar line, so they're going to be able to just jump on the streetcar and come to class. Uh, there's the development along the, along the line, so you know, maybe in the future there's a grocery store, and they'll be able to jump on that and just go grocery shopping instead of having to 
have a car, or get in their car, or borrow a car from their friend. Reporting from University, I'm Danielle Carpenter for Wildcast. You have the opportunity to have breakfast with the U of A president. ASUA is hosting the first ever Breakfast Club event where students can meet with Dr. Ann Weaver Hart to ask questions about her plans for the university. This event will be Thursday, February 14th from 8 to 9 a.m. in the Ventana Room on the fourth floor of the Student Union. We'll be there next week to bring you all the information in case you can't make the event. So, Carol Ann, this seems like a really cool, you know, opportunity to kind of meet someone in, at the university. Are you planning on attending? I don't quite know if I'm attending, but I know it is important to be involved with, with campus events, and it seems like a good thing that our university is doing. But we do have some wild things to come to UATV this week. We'll have more information after the break. I'm Derek Williams, the former U of A Wildcat. You're watching UATV. Don't change the channel. Hello, and welcome to UA Tonight. We are your hosts. No, all right. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's okay, you don't have to cut me off. No oh way. Guatemala. I'm like Thank literally you so obsessed. Thank so much. Baby, I been sexy like you. Baby. All these travelers, I've never even been there. For drunk driving after calling the cops on himself. Please thought that you guys. Oh my oh god! My god. <laughs> UA Campus Pantry is a nonprofit organization new to the University of Arizona. They provide food and other numerous resources to staff and students who could not otherwise obtain it. Their big launch was on campus last Friday. Campus pantries are also at other colleges and universities across the country. Construction is underway, not for the streetcar, but for a new recreational field on our campus. Reporter Megan Canterbury has the details. University of Arizona students are in for a big surprise at the rec center this coming fall. And no, it's not more workout machines. A new recreational field is going to be put in at the southwest corner of 6th and Cherry. It will be used primarily for intramural and club sports, um, but any of our other programs will be able to use it as well. Um, fitness, kind of outdoor adventures. In the fall of 2013, this parking lot will be a recreational field to be used by clubs and intramural sports. This field will also be using reclaimed water, making it a more environmentally friendly project. A new parking structure will also be built where two south of six lots are currently located. According to Parking and Transportation Services, the structure is estimated to hold between eight and 900 cars. While the extra spaces are good news, students are not looking forward to construction. It's going to be a little bit of an inconvenience uh, just because I love walking right here, walking underneath the stadium to get to my classes. Uh, sleeping habits might have to change a little bit. Uh, I love to sleep in, but construction usually starts real early in the morning. Students look forward to using the field, happy that it is open to the public rather than solely for the use of college athletics. I haven't done clubs or intramurals in the past, but this field might be the thing that makes me sign up for them because it sounds really cool. According to Campus Recreation, the U of A will spend $3.5 million on this project. The field has been on the UA master plan since the mid-90s, so this is a very exciting and highly anticipated project for Campus Rec. Reporting from the UA Rec Center for Wildcast, I'm Megan Canterbury. Wildcast is going to get even wilder this week, literally. The San Diego Zoo will be coming here to show off their new and upcoming Australian Outback exhibit, complete with a kangaroo, birds, and reptiles. Be sure to tune in this Thursday at 2.30 p.m. and next Monday night. For more information, check out our Facebook page. And we're here with our sports anchor, Lauren Weinberg. Lauren, what do you have for us? My voice is still gone from cheering for the 49ers during the Super Bowl yesterday. For those Northern California fans, I feel your pain, trust me. On a happier note, however, it was a great week for our men's basketball team, which recorded its first undefeated road trip of the season this weekend. On Thursday, they won a nail-biter against the University of Washington, 57-53, and went on to beat Washington State on Saturday, 79-65. The Cats are currently ranked number seven in the nation and take on Stanford this Wednesday at McHale Center. In other news, 
The defending national champion baseball team held its Meet the Team Day on Saturday at High Corbett Field with a turnout of over 500 fans. Coach Lopez and the players held a scrimmage that afternoon and then signed autographs and answered questions. That's all I have for tonight. Have a great week and bear down, Wildcats. Thanks, Lauren. As always, thanks for tuning in to the late edition of Wildcast. You can watch us anytime online at uatv.arizona.edu or on our YouTube channel, UATVCH3. If you haven't already, be sure to like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Janice and Carol Ann for on-campus news, updates, and events. And we'll see you next week for another edition of Wildcast. Thank you.